Father of the Bride, at first I just thought it was funny, a funny name because it made me think of the movie. And that's usually how any Vampire Weekend thing starts, including Vampire Weekend the band. <laughs> People sometimes forget how stupid our name is. But so I was like, Father of the Bride, it just like stuck with me. And I was like, it's kind of a funny phrase. And I didn't, I wasn't particularly interested in like writing an album about a concept album about like a wedding or something. But then I just thought about it. Well, what does that mean? You know, like, what what, what does that represent? I said, well, Father of the Bride, it, that that makes you think of a transitional moment. You know, it makes you think of generations and the past and the present, and the future. It's an interesting moment, and maybe that's how I kind of felt in my life a little bit. I don't know if I sometimes relate more to being the bride or the father of the bride or a bystander or something. But I was kind of like that transitional side uh, and the way it made me think about time and uh, that's kind of what, what put it over the top for me. This is the first album in six years, but it didn't take six years. And, and, and partially it's like, you know, after the first three albums, it's kind of like burned out, you know? I think I, I really felt like we'd accomplished something and I didn't want to keep putting out music just, you know, just cause, you know? I wanted to wait until there was something new to say. And I knew that after, you know, three albums in your 20s, fairly well received, a lot of people do that. But I, I knew in the back of my head, I was like, oh, the next transition is far and away like the, the stickiest. You know, it's like, it's like in, in those like rock climbing documentaries and like they have like the next, I forget what they call it, like they got this thing, you know, coming up the next stage or whatever and they're just like, oof, that one's messed up. And I, that's kind of how I felt. I was like, because I've witnessed so many artists that I liked who, who had, had a lot of cool ideas when they were young. And then they, they just, maybe they didn't care as much about music when they got older or, or whatever, it, it happens. So I, I thought, like, let's take some time off. But then when you take time off, you know, you put, release an album, tour a little bit, take a year off. I took a year off to make this cartoon with Jaden Smith just because I want to do something totally unrelated to music. And then I start working on it. And the next thing you know, it's already been four years. And I'm like, I felt a little bit like, oops, forgot to start my homework. Um, but luckily, when I did start, that all, all that time away gave me ideas. I felt like energized and creative and stuff. So then, I, you know, I started writing with different people, meeting new people, because I, I, I just wanted this to have a different feeling. So, you know, Steve Lacey, DJ Dahi, Blood Pop, you, you know, uh, kind of new people in my life. And then when Ariel Rekshad, my main collaborator, uh, he, he was wrapping up the Haim album, that was the last thing he was working on. When he was free, then we're like, all right, let's do this. Every day, got in, then two years go by, and you know, life gets in the way and then I'm like, wow, six years. Never would have guessed that. But at the same time, I wouldn't change it either. It feels like kind of appropriate. Well, Steve Lacey tweeted at me. So that was kind of the most direct way that I, I met somebody. Um, Blood Pop was somebody who I always liked his work. And we were kind of like Twitter friends. I guess there was a lot of Twitter involved, actually, now that I think about it. Blood Pop introduced me to DJ Dahi, who was a great producer. And so that's how I met those guys. And then, you know, people like Ariel, he co-produced our last album. He's been in the mix for a long time. Danielle Heim, I've known her forever. I saw one of Heim's first shows in New York before anybody knew who they were. And then, you know, over the years, we've performed together. We, you know, share so many friends in common and stuff. So that felt very natural. You know, on, on this album, it's 18 songs and it always changes. And that's one thing that I've always strived for with Vampire Weekend is to this feeling that every song on the album is somebody's favorite song. And it's a goal. People can debate me whether or not it, it always happens, but I'm amazed sometimes when people tell me like, oh, you guys haven't played, like recently we've been posting the set list and they're like, man, you guys haven't played California English in a while. And that's a song on our second album. And I, and I remember once, you know, you, these memories stick with you, people being like, oh, that song's annoying, it's too fast, whatever. And I was like, wow, these, these some people like really want to hear that song. And I was like, okay, cool. It, you know, you get the people who like the, the singles and you people like the deep cuts. So anyway, I kind of feel like it, at, when I'm working on a record, at every moment, 
at some point, every song has to be my favorite because I have to almost put myself in the audience's shoes. Because I think we all know, we're familiar with the type of record where you could listen to it once or twice and you could say, those two songs will be 99% of people's favorites, that song will be nobody's favorite because they're just worse and worse versions of each other. Whereas with Vampire Weekend, you know, successfully or not, it's not for me to say, we at least try to give every song a different flavor. So, you know, it, it's been different. Like, it's been, there's a Harmony Hall, that song was quite a journey. At some point, that was my favorite song, but also working on it so hard kind of made it less my favorite song. Um, some, there's this one with Danielle called Married in a Gold Rush, which uh, I felt like that was just like a, a new type of songwriting for me. And that this kind of got a different vibe. And that's also the one you know, the ones like that where, you know, it's a, it's a duet with another singer uh, kind of indebted to country music with this whole other group. You know, it's, it's, it's new territory for us, so when I hear somebody say that that's one of their favorites, that's really gratifying because then I know we're still, like, on a journey. We haven't quite hit that kind of, like, you know, nostalgia period yet. Hey, I'm Ezra from Vampire Weekend, and make sure to listen to our new album, Father of the Bride, on iHeartRadio. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos from your favorite artist. And while you're here, check out these other videos.